Well, hi everyone. I'm Andy Asher. I'm editor at Bloomer Boomer. Now, like so many things in life, we are never prepared for life events until it falls right in our lap. Maybe that sounds familiar. You've had a couple of old, I have a couple of teenagers living their normal life at the time and some dramatic moments with them, but a couple of aging parents. For, for teens, you have friends and support groups to prepare for that emotional period, as difficult as it may be. But uh, for the aging parents, if you're like me, it can all come as a total surprise. And, and that was my life. I guess about 10 years ago, I was clearly one of those in the sandwich generation. Finally, someone has come along who can help out uh, and prepare ourselves for dealing with aging parents so we aren't caught so are off guard. It's Charlotte Canyon wrote a book called You Have to Laugh to Keep from Crying, How to Parent Your Parents. I'd say read the book, but today hopefully uh, you will all learn some great tips for anyone faced with your parenting, your parent dilemma. And we'll talk with Charlotte in just a moment. Right. Let me just tell you how I got started. My father-in-law lived with us and my husband's an only child. He developed dementia. Well, within a week or two, we found out my mother was in was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, and my dad was in the early stages of Parkinson's. So baptism by fire, I became the parent. Your parent, I just oh, dove in. For, I was working full time. Oh, I was my. in my sixties. I was working full time. Well, what are we supposed? To, I actually retired early to be able to handle all of the paperwork. Uh, all, all of the caring, uh, we would drive back and forth to East Texas. Uh, I would find caregivers down there to help with my parents. My dad was a Marine and he didn't want anyone in the house. Oh my gosh. I, and some of the stories are in my book, but you know, I couldn't tell everything because it, it would have been three inches thick. But the, the drama of taking care of parents could be troublesome, you know, to say the least. Oh and the biggest issue was taking his car keys away. My hu my husband did, couldn't do that. He didn't want to do that. And I'm just the daughter-in-law, so it was like, how do I manipulate this? My neighbors are telling me they don't want their kids on the street when Pop's in his car. And that's a big, big thing to take their car keys away. But we, we finally did. And what caused that was Pop came in one day and he said, Charlotte, you've got to go with me. I've hit a mailbox. And one mm -hmm. thing I learned, and I want everyone to, to take this home with them, is when your parents tell you something, agree with them. You can work it where you can help them as long as you don't keep confusing them and saying, no, you're wrong. No, you're wrong. And so finally, I, I got my husband to take him to a doctor and the doctor said, no, he can't drive anymore. Yeah, that's sometimes uh, what it takes. Uh, well, okay, so, you were through these just nightmare situations. Uh, what uh, now, as time has gone by, uh, what can you share uh, with other people who uh, have to deal with that, those very same situations? Well, the one thing I, and I speak at Alzheimer's events and I speak all around, and the one thing I, I guess my mantra is, is create new memories, create cherished memories and love your parents respect them for who, what, and where they are, and have patience. Have patience with not just them, but with yourself, because you're gonna feel things that you never thought you would feel, and forgive. Forgive yourself for what you're gonna feel, and forgive them for what they may or may, not, may have done, or maybe something they did in the past. Those are my four things. Love, respect, patience, and forgiveness. Yeah. Those what, are the what things are, I try to that, teach. That's good advice. And what are some of those feelings that you had that you didn't really expect? Resentment. Why mm -hmm. me? Why me? You know, like I said early on, I just kind of thought my parents would die in their bed. I knew I probably would be taking care of my mother, but my dad being, as I mentioned earlier, he was a very strong Marine and he didn't want any help. He had Parkinson's, he had self-diagnosed himself, never gone to the doctor. And I just, I really thought he was just gonna take a gun and shoot himself. I really did. So your book sounds like it's uh, 
something of a biography or a nonfiction uh, story about what life was like uh, for you at that point. Is that is that kind of an, a proper way to look at it? That's a good way to look at it. What it what it is is a collection of 23 stories that dealt with my father-in-law, my mother, and my dad that fit into love, respect, patience, and forgiveness. And there's a couple other chapters. A doctor wrote a chap chapter for me. She has three or four stories about her family. What it does is it's a hug and it tells people they're not alone. There's there's others out there like, and they will listen to your story. They, they want you to tell your story. Now, I know that there are many people and cultures who are committed uh, to looking after their aging parents at some point, even for them, it can just become too much. Well, and, and if you look at Europe and, and some of the nationalities over there, they take care of their elderly. America's not real good at doing it. We're, we're building these retirement villages and these, you know, that send mama off. You know, back in the day, mom lived with you or dad lived with you. The families lived together. I admire a lot of those. Uh, nowadays, you know, mom may live in Florida and you live in Texas. You know, what do you do? So uh, what do you what do you think of that? I mean, is that is that wrong or how should we maybe uh, re review or relook at things? Well, you have to look at what your talents are or, 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 and how you feel. And yes, you have to be there. I have a friend right now and her sister lives near mom, but she goes down every two or three weeks to relieve her sister and takes care of her mom. Charlotte, you sound like a wonderful person and uh, the, your parents were lucky to have you, uh, and I, I sure appreciate you uh, spending some time with us. Well, thank you very much. I, uh, I hope you liked the show. I hope you, you learned a thing or two. The full show will be available on YouTube and here at Bloomer Boomer. The audio version will be available on iTunes, and we have some other great shows coming up with some amazing guests, so uh, please like us on Facebook and visit us at BloomerBoomer.com. Until next time, so long.